All right, welcome back to the Unpolished Podcast. Today, I'm joined by my co-host Daniel, as usual, but special guest Robin. And today, I guess as you can tell by what we have sitting on the table, we're going to be talking, uh, I suppose, collecting yeah. as a whole. Yeah. Because we got a few different things on the go here. But, yeah, we could do that. But yeah, Robin, uh, I guess, a little backstory, like we, we all go way back. So, but primarily for you, you've been into sneaker collecting. Mm -hmm. So I guess we'll just dive right into it. When did that start? So as a kid, I was always into shoes. I wasn't super crazy. And to get this straight, I come from a family that was a bit under average. (laughs) Yeah. So I couldn't just buy crazy shoes, especially as a kid. But what we did coming from an Asian family, we're at the mall every week. Yeah. So we'd always go to Champs, Full Locker. Just look at stuff. Look at stuff that looks cool, right? But not actually buy stuff. Yeah. It was until I started working at Full Locker where I really got into shoes. Like that, I was already discount. Yeah. <laughs> like I was already on forums, like on Nike Talk, all that stuff, looking at shoes, but I never actually bought. But then when I got the discount, it was kind of cool. But at the same time, back then, spending over 130 bucks on shoes and more was like unheard of. Wild, for me. yeah. Like, I'd always only spend, like, 60 to 80 bucks. Like, I always got yeah. discount. <laughs> so I started buying, well, I got my first shoe. It was, like, a pair of free runs for, like, 90 okay, bucks. Yeah. And I was like, okay, this is kind of cool. But then the more I started working at Foot Locker, I kind of learned more about shoes, more than I should have. I learned there was a culture, a community behind it. I met a bunch of regulars every week, the same people that came every Friday, every Saturday. And then they kind of taught me about shoes. And I slowly started to learn about release dates. I got into reselling. And then I got into collecting shoes too. And then your life went into shambles? Yeah, and then everything. Then I just went on a huge shoe roller coaster. <laughs> everything everything changed. For the good and bad though. Yeah. Like, if it wasn't for me reselling shoes, I probably wouldn't have bought these shoes. But yeah. every shoe I bought was through making money off of selling shoes. Yeah. Which is really cool. That seems, I'm just like, to touch on what you said before, like that seems to be the narrative with a lot of collectors. Like you watch a lot of uh, like sneaker shopping episodes and like all those kinds of shows. Mm -hmm. And the narrative always seems to be that like, um, like I always saw these growing up or like you idolize people, but it was never the case. Mm -hmm. Like for you, like whether you're like, whether you're even well off or not, like it seems to be the narrative that it's always like, oh, like I'm shopping every week and I see this, you see like athletes wear it and stuff and like you want it so bad and then once you have the chance you're just like all over it exactly like for me like i wasn't like i liked michael jordan i wasn't too into him like i was more of a kobe fan growing up like i love kobe's but even back then like kobe shoes were expensive and when i played ball i remember my parents had to buy me like the shittiest like like the worst ball shoes some bricks and i hated them so when i got my first pair of kobe's i was like oh this is this is sick. This is worth it. When you first started getting into actually wanting to like collect some of these shoes, was there a specific brand that you're into? Like, were you th- like, oh, I'm in love with just Adidas or Nikes or? No. So when I first got into shoes, like the first brand I really, really liked was actually Creative Recreation. Oh, okay. If you ever heard of yeah, it. Okay, yeah. It was a big thing in LA and like something about the strap over the toe was just like, I liked it a lot. So I remember I those being those. like that was that was a thing for a while. I remember those. Yeah. So I collected a bunch of colors off of those. But then like obviously Nike, like yeah. those kind of stuff, I fell in love after. It's just that creative Rex were like pretty cheap. Or you can get them for pretty cheap back then, which is why I yeah. like them. I mean everything on the table right now we got Nike, so Yeah, that, <laughs> <It's fun. laughs> it changed a bit, but yeah. I had a huge phase through that. Yeah. And it was pretty so cool. we were actually talking about this like prior to the podcast so what like what was the peak of your collection as far as like pairs ago so or like even a value you can flex on everybody fuck it yeah so at one point i held 281 pairs or it's 284 it was one of the two (laughs) but it was nuts because like my like my guest room that's what i used for my storage was fully full my room was full our attic was full i was like leaving shoes at friend's house uh, one of my buddies, I had a bunch of shoes at his crib. 
and when I mean a bunch, I got at least like forty to fifty. Like it was, oh, it was bad. <laughs> like, and I, I remember coming over. Sometimes you're like, oh yeah, come. Sh- I'll, I'll show you like some of the pairs. And I you remember you opening the door and it's just like floor to ceiling boxes. And I was like, this guy has a problem. Yeah, <laughs> like, and yeah, you got to take in. My parents were opposed to buying shoes over like a yeah. hundred bucks, right? I guess, well, sorry to so, like <laughs> yeah. to give it more of a timeline. We're talking like like high school. Yeah. So like you're living at home, so yeah. it's like. Holy fuck. Like, yeah, then a few years later, like, it's funny because I would come home with all these shoes every week, and they they did not know how I got this money. They right. didn't know how I got everything. It was Hang crazy. On. Did you lie about, yeah, these are all $90, $80 pair of shoes. Did you ever lie about the pricing of the shoes? At first, I did. <laughs> I, at first, I did, and then I didn't realize that MSRP, like, the price of the shoes. It's on the box. They're on the box. <laughs> yeah. And I actually didn't notice that, and I was like. And it's stacked in the hallways. <laughs> <laughs> they were always in my living room, and I looked, and I was like, like, back then, I looked, and I was like, oh, shit. They, they know call I, you out for it? Oh, absolutely. They're like, are you are you selling drugs? Like, what what are you doing? Like, how how are you getting this? And I was like, I was like, I'm I'm selling shoes. I, I'm telling you, like, it's not my size. And they're like, I don't believe. Well, like that's the thing is, because like I'm I'm in the same boat, but like not to that extent. Like, as far as a crazy collection, but I've had like like I currently have like a lot of I have, like ones fours. Kind of like broke it down now just into like what I really like. Mm-hmm. Uh, but. Before that, I remember it was like crazy having to explain like, oh no, I bought two pairs of shoes and then I sold one to pay for the other. <laughs> and like, it's just this weird like cycle of like, for like some... I didn't really even make anything, but like so many times, like I remember even recently I bought the, like some of the Supreme Louis Vuitton stuff. Oh yeah. So I picked that up and then sold that to pay for mine <laughs> and then some, and then like my mom would be like, oh, but like, that's insane. Like, wow. How do you spend like? How are you spending like a thousand dollars on a white T-shirt? And I'm like, okay, so here's how it works: like, break out the chalkboard. <laughs> like, I got, Dude, I got to explain this. The crazy thing is, my parents didn't believe me till 2018, and I I was selling shoes since 2012. So that's six years of them. Like, they did not believe me. And so drugs. It, <laughs> it was always, it was always drugs. It was crazy. But essentially, what happened was like, I bought a pair of Easy Twos. A pair of pure planos. They're brand new. Uh, never worn. It wasn't my size, so that's why I didn't keep it. I was like, this is a shoe I'll never keep because it's not my size, so I'll sell them. StockX like, started to become a thing. So I saw on StockX, and our dollar was really shitty at the time. So then I went on StockX. I was like, yeah, I can sell these. After conversion, it came out to 4.6K. So I showed my mom, and I was like, I was like hey, mom, look. Like, this is my bank account. Yeah, I withdrew $3,500. Just ignore that. But I used that money to buy this shoe. And I was like, I'm going to sell it on this website right here. And I'm going to get the money in like maybe two weeks. And they were like so skeptical. Like they didn't get it. So I showed the shoe. I shipped the shoe. I did everything. And then like a couple of weeks later when I got my payout, it was like, I think it was like 45, 18 around there, which is actually pretty low when I think about it now. But they were like, they were blown away. Like, they didn't believe it. And I even had to print out, like, my payout just to, for them to believe it. And they're like, whoa. So, yeah, she, you do this. I was like, yeah. It's a thing. There you go. It finally clicked. Like, well, you can make, like, in certain types of collecting, when you get into, like, the the really good stuff, let's say, you can make some good money. Like, absolutely. People, like, people, time over time, have made a living off this. Absolutely. Like, what's his name? That kid um, that was always on DJ Khaled's Snapchat. That now it sells. What's his name? Yeah. 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 But well, we won't talk about that. We'll just do that. <laughs> yeah. Robin's getting a little triggered over. It. No, but people <laughs> don't a, know. Not a, not a Ben Kicks fan or what? I'm kind of. Yeah, he's he's kind of cringe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah he's he's he's, he's pretty cringe. He's whack. Like he's whack. <laughs> yeah, but going back, like people don't really know how much you make from reselling. Like oh, when I time. like when I first Insane. started, like I like telling this story because when I first started at Full Locker, Jordans were two hundred dollars. After discount, they would literally be one forty seven, oh four after tax. Fuck. So that'd be, that'd be nice. Yeah, <laughs> people will go into the store like a week before and be like, "Hey man, can you help me grab this pair? Like I really want it for myself." I'm like, "Okay, maybe." And he'd be like, "I'll give you two hundred fifty bucks," and I'd be like, "All right, sure." Yeah. And, oh, and yeah. for me, that's like a hundred bucks profit, right? And that's how it started. So I did that for one week. I was like, "Oh, three hundred bucks." Then I did two shoes. After that, I was like, yo, two shoes? I paid for my one shoe, and I make 50 bucks. 
Yeah. So it went from one shoe, two shoe, four shoes a week to eight shoes a week yeah. to like, you know how it goes. It's well, this is like pre having to raffle or pre having to like limiting one or two pairs. It's obviously usually one. Yeah. Or like any limits on that, I'm assuming, right? So there were always rules at Full Locker. So it's funny because people there, sorry, always... Sorry to interrupt, like, has there always been like... What I meant, sorry, is like, has there always been like a raffle rule? Yes. Okay. So I remember like, even like in high school, I remember tons of times like raffling pairs. So, well, actually, there was a point in time where there wasn't. There was one Jordan release called the Gold Medal Pack. Yeah. I don't remember the story accurately, but essentially... Give or take, they had about 20 pairs, right? 20 packs. And they didn't have a limit on employee pairs. And from what I remember, because people lined up back then, what I remember is people lined up, and by the time it hit the line, there was only like three pairs out to the public. And all the staff bought it. So then after that, they released a rule, what was called the 20% rule, which is what they use right now. So 20% of the stock is how many that can be allocated to employees. So if you have 20 pairs then four people can get it then it's based off of seniority but then i kind of got around that by asking people to get it for me i was like yo can you get me this can you get me this once i hit like eight people six people then i cut it then i just sell from there okay i got a question for you what's your best deal you've made on a pair if you don't mind me don't mind sharing best deal let's say we'll do the best and the worst deal how's that okay I think the best deal, I don't, I don't remember the exact shoes, but I sold a pack of shoes to, I'm not going to say their name, to a person in Calgary. They, I think it was five shoes for 8K. But yeah, it's not that, it's not a huge number, yeah. but for how much I got those shoes. <clears throat> like retail? Or they're, like, they're about if, like 200 yeah. bucks each, like yeah. maybe uh, 250 you. each. So like my the profit on that one was nuts, and it was yeah. just a quick like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh thanks, thanks, dude. What was in it? Like what shoes? Do you remember? Like it was obviously heat. If it's fucking uh, AK for five, a couple. I think it was the turtle doves, the Yeezys. Okay, the yeah. And the funny thing Back is, when is like, those just like blew the fuck up. <laughs> yeah, my pairs were super worn. Like they were super worn, and the the problem about those Yeezys is that the first gen of the Boost the boost would stiffen up and the sole yeah. would snap in half. And one pair of those was about to snap. I knew it. That's why I was trying to sell it. So that's why <laughs> yeah. I packaged it. And he was Rowdy. all for it. And I was, I was like, right, if, you, if, you're, if you're happy with it, I'm down. You got it. <laughs> yeah, dude. I remember like when those first came out, I picked up like, like I can, this is probably even my best deal. This guy was like absolutely loaded from Calgary. I don't even know his name or what he does. Had his assistant meet me in Calgary uh, for, to like give me the shoes. Nice. He's like, He's like, I'm so busy. She pulls up in like a like a extended like long wheelbase Range Rover, what? and I asked her. I was like, Oh, I love like I love this car. Like, is she's like, Oh, it's just like for running errands. Like, it's not mine. It's his. And then she <laughs> he sold me a pair of the like the V twos, but they were the um uh not the olive ones, not the pink ones, but they were like the Ore- Oreo ones. Like, if you want to call it that. Oh yeah, I know. Those just ones. with the white stripe, black and white. Because yeah. they for two hundred dollars, and they're Dude, brand that's- new. And That's then nuts. I just like made a I just like made a big scene about like the box because like people just make a big deal about it. I don't I don't really give a fuck. If I'm gonna wear it. Like what do I need the box for? Now they're like beat to shit. I wore them like hiking, but like yeah. <laughs> I just remember at the time I'm like I just made this big deal. He's like I don't even want them. Like just and I asked her and she's like yeah I'll text him and she's like she's yeah two hundred dollars is fine. I was like okay Dude, I think they're nuts. like I think I checked it the week to like eight or nine hundred dollars right now. So I was like again like. Just not that it's not crazy or like this pair that's like sought after, but like the fact that just like two hundred bucks and this guy just didn't give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. <laughs> that's actually crazy. Okay, you guys are making me a little lightheaded with these numbers. You're like, <laughs> not, maybe not so much you, Jacob, but yeah, you, you got some. Okay, let's go to the bad bad end of it. Worst worst deal. Worst deal. Say. Um, this has got to be a good story. I don't know, man. I've I've had a few. Robin, actually, doesn't, Robin doesn't get hustled. Actually, actually, <laughs> when I look at it now, so the Nike like SB Dunks have been going off yeah. like crazy. I've had a lot of Dunks that I got for like fifty bucks, sixty bucks, seventy bucks, close to brand new, new. I I would sell them for like forty, just to like get rid of stock because they took up too much room. Yeah. 
not to say specific pairs, but like I've I've looked, I've checked value. The pairs I've been selling for forty bucks are at minimum like three to five hundred bucks each. That's mental. Each. So I've easily lost like I can confidently say profit wise, I've definitely lost at least six K, eight K off of those. I was gonna that's funny you bring that up because I bought three three or four pairs of dunks like years ago when they weren't like as popping as they are now. I feel like dunks were definitely a thing that like more of like I'll just call it a niche for lack of a better way to put it. Like it wasn't always what's popular. People were more like Jordans and then Yeezy and then Adidas Yeezy. But I had those and like mine are just beat to shit. And like I can't remember each like name individually, but same thing. Like I I recently kind of just went through what I have. Yeah. And I was looking it up and they're like six seven hundred dollars. And I'm like and then I look at them and they're just beat to uh, they're beat to hell. <laughs> like, no. like I remember at like one of our Soul Good events, I was literally selling them for twenty bucks each because that's how where I sold a bunch of them. Literally twenty dollars each. Just to get rid of them, man. Like I think about it now, like every single parent had so many, and I was like, "And you don't sleep when you think about it." (laughs) It hurts. (laughs) It hurts, man. Let it out. It's the unpolished. You're you're safe. Safe space. Had to move on. Things change. So, like, I was I was actually gonna bring that up. Soul good. So I know that, like, in the city, like, would you you consider yourself pretty involved, like, in all this in the city, like, yeah. So so good. Like, how did that start? And what for the people that don't know what that is? What is that? And kind of where's the direct? I'm just curious myself. Like, the direction that's going now that uh, COVID's a thing. Yeah. So basically, for people that don't know, Soul Good is basically Edmonton sneaker and streetwear trade show. Uh, we did it because me and my partners we love shoes. We love streetwear. And we love the community. Like we like talking about shoes and all this stuff. And we wanted to, we wanted to host and create an event where the community could come together, buy, sell, trade, talk about shoes. That's originally what it, what it started out as. But then as it grew, a lot of local businesses, like a lot of like consignment stores, clothing brands, started coming up. And I like I'm a person that supports local. Like I love local brands. So like this event gave so much exposure to the all these local brands and it was just good it benefited us it benefited them and it was it was good it just brought it's the a win-win win for everybody exactly that's interesting you bring that up because i was thinking about this the other week um just how many places have been popping up like even in the last like two years yeah like i know like even just shout out like yeah like from another you got yeah you got the, the come, come up. up yeah come up's crazy authentics club yeah uh, we never had that yeah Jared never Shop. had that. like it's it's crazy like there's so much going on now and i'm here for it though i love it like same, i'm in the same boat as you i yeah. love that it's funny because like seven or six years ago we wanted to open up our own like consignment shop like an actual shop and we were thinking we're like man like can will it live like will this actually work like no one's ever done it in our city yet like i don't know but now you see all these businesses coming up and they're actually doing very well like i kind of regret not opening earlier but it is what it is yeah well so i guess like where's the where's so good going now like for the future it's just gonna come back once restrictions aren't so heavy yeah it's tough because like we tried well I really wanted They're busy. to do an event. They're like yeah. packed from what I've seen and from when I've been. Yeah. It's busy. There's so much demand for it. Everyone's asking for it. Everyone mm-hmm. wants updates. And like we we were going to have an event, like a mini event. We were going to try. But before we did that, like I I did a little survey with a bunch of sellers from the past few years. Just asking them. I was like, yo, do you feel comfortable? Like if we invited you, like would you want to have a spot at our event? And I think it was like... 80% of our responses were no. Yeah. They felt uncomfortable. And it's... And it's not the same with this, like, the... the like, because I know you hosted at... Correct me if I'm wrong, it's like the Matrix Hotel. Yeah. So, like, they obviously would have restrictions on, like, the flow of people and the amount of people that come through. Yeah. And, and you look at, like, photos before and you, you have, like, some sometimes where it's just packed. Yeah. Like, how do you... You can't control that. The like, biggest thing we it. do is, like... Because we actually like using the smaller venues. Because once people fill it up, it feels busy, right? It feels like it feels like a lot of business going down. A lot of people are talking. And given and the, COVID... The conversation can happen. Exactly. Yeah. Now, given COVID, like, what are you going to do? Like, oh, we got to stand <laughs> six feet apart. Oh, sorry. You have, like, 10 <laughs> seconds per table. And yeah. then you got to keep moving, like... Yeah, but a big thing was, like... Sellers were, like, I don't want 
random people I don't know touching my shit. Touching your shit. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> I was just going to say that. And at the same time, like for me, if I was a buyer, I kind of want to touch the shit I want to buy. Oh, like, 100%. I, need, I need to pick I'm, it up. Okay, lately I'm so bad for that. I was actually, funny thing, I was at Foot Locker today and I picked up a pair of shoes and they're those uh, like N3, 4, whatever the fuck those are. Oh, yeah. With, like, the stitched on check. Yeah. Just, like, I'm into, like, so much minimalist shit now. Like, my style's definitely changed bro, so much, thing. bro. Like, I, now I picked up shoes, like, $100. <laughs> I'm wearing, like, Dude. white Air Force Ones every day. <laughs> I'm just wearing white Air Force Vans. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Fuck, yeah. That's but anyways, it. point being, like, I go, and they're, like, I don't think, I'm not too sure if they have, like, really strict rules. But, like, I always feel bad because I'm, like, touching everything. And I'm, like, yeah. picking up clothes, and I want to feel them. Or, like, grabbed a couple hoodies at the, I was shopping today. Grab a couple, like, basics. And I'm, like grabbing them and i'm like feeling the inside and then i feel kind of bad like people are kind of like judging the fuck out of you but. yeah i know but like what are you supposed to do how do you shop like yeah, i need the, I, I, I want to touch the thing i'm gonna wear like yeah. i don't think i've ever bought anything without touching it or like feeling what i'm buying like it, it, exactly it's just a part of like if i'm own this I, I need to know what i'm buying exactly and you can see the quality out of it right which is a huge like, especially nowadays right and you know all about quality being a part of yeah. shoe culture right exactly well yeah you're not gonna like what if i linked up and i'm buying a pair of ones off you i'm not gonna you're not gonna let me touch them yeah that's like <laughs> yeah it's messed up it's fucking whack but yeah i like i get it when people say like oh can i try it on and then yeah. you say no like yeah, yeah. like that yeah, makes sense okay. but like sometimes like you gotta see what's wrong what if it's ripped here yeah. like, you can't <laughs> see you can't you don't know but it is what it so is. I guess like kind of touched on it, but what are you into now? Like you did, you did more or less like, touch on it, but yeah, similar to you. Like I'm pretty into super minimalistic stuff. Realistically, I just wear a bunch of Vans. I have a lot of common projects now because they're they were just daily shoes, and there were stuff I could wear at my old job yeah. daily. Common projects, Converse, the old Air Force, a couple Air Max. It's nothing, nothing too loud. Like I might. Wear a Jordan once every month now. So you're saying, <laughs> like, you don't, like, I'm assuming you used to have like a pretty hefty rotation of shoes. So is now pretty yeah, like, like your previous rotation yeah. The, the rotation was nuts. So I you <laughs> dude, I used to run to like, a, like a like my regular rotation used to run between twenty to twenty five pairs out. What? So the so the front of my house was crazy. Like my parents <laughs> would rip on me. And I was just telling them, oh, just wait, wait, wait like a week. I'll wash them all at once. But then I kind of stopped because, like, when I clean my shoes, dude, cleaning 25 pairs takes forever. It takes forever. And I actually care. So, like, I clean it really deep. And, yeah, it just went from 20 shoes to 15 to 10 to, like, three. Three? Three to four now. So what's, like... What's like your peak of like the heat fucking rotation? <laughs> like, like you're just wearing bangers every day. <laughs> like, what, what, there was what, a point. What, like, what? What? Uh, I guess like, like what specific. silhouettes are in the? In I the think, rotation. I think it was like using my birthday month. I don't know why. Oh no, no 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 not my birthday month. It was always the first day of school. So when I was in university, yeah, the you first you got to drop the heat yo, on the first day. The first month of school, I used to wear absolute big. Like I'd wear a different <laughs> Uzi every day, a different Jordan every day, and I would go until I couldn't wear anymore. And it was funny because like the the I think it was the first day of university of my sec. Oh no, my first day of second year, I just got these Yeezys, and I remember wearing them, and I was like in our spiral staircase at McEwen, right in the middle. And I remember walking down, and those stairs are weird because they're like a they're weird, like a weird triangle. Like the outside's really big, and the inside's really skinny, so you can trip easily. So I was walking down, and this guy was walking up, and he was like, "He was you're looking wearing down. Some, you're wearing some triple S's, and you ate shit." <laughs> no, he was. <laughs> I like I was literally wearing this. I walk past him, and I see his eyes. Like he, I see him look like this, and I was like, "Oh, he knows." <laughs> yeah, he I was knows. like, "He knows." So Respect I'm walking. Respect the drip, Garrett. <laughs> yeah, I'm walking. And then all of a sudden, I hear this guy fall down. And I look back up, and he's like, yo, those are dope. And I was like, I was like, I was like, yo, are you okay, man? I was like, thanks. But like, Don't lie, Robin. You low-key uh, low love that shit. Dude, I felt gassed. <laughs> yeah. like, I was gassed because everyone was Respect. staring, too. And then everyone was looking at my shoes, like people that don't know shoes. And I was like, in my head, 
I, I felt pretty gassed. At the yeah. same time, I felt concerned because this guy ate it. This yeah, guy absolutely ate up. it. But it was that was a good story. That was really cool. <laughs> so like even Daniel, uh, what have you been, what have you been wearing lately? And like I know you've picked up a couple things here and there. I don't know. I've been I I fell for a lot of the Kanye West shoes. Like I got a pair of like Yeezys and then the the all black Calabasas shoes. But nothing. I I've always oh, wanted to get into those. Like into shoes more is just the cleaning. I can't get over it. But the like because I started buying like the cleaning cleaning stuff, the brushes. Man, it took way too much time. I I'm on you with that. Like I, you dedicated, not for me, not for me. But Loki, the guy downtown. Uh, shoe shine shack guy or whatever. He cleans shoes, man. Have you heard of that place? Yeah, that we, place we had crazy. him at our we had him at Soul Good a couple that of months ago. It's the one in Hype Fetish, right? Yeah, yeah they yeah, share yeah, space. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Shoe shine shack. Uh, shoe yeah, shine yeah, shack. Yeah, shoe yeah, shack. Shoe, 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 shoe shine shack. Little fucking riddle, but I actually haven't been there. But I've seen their work and it's pretty good. Well, he cleans everything. It's like apparently he's gone into like he's got a bunch of product. Anyways, now I just wear a bunch of shoes and then I'll just drop them off there. That's smart. The, the pricing is not too crazy because I remember seeing on Instagram and stuff people uh, in the States going and like dropping off shoes to get cleaned. And I'm like, man, why don't we have anything here? And I was going to ask you if there's any. And then I saw this thing come up on uh, on Instagram on like a sponsored post or whatever. And I like stop by and the guy does really good work. Well, I know that you had, you took me there and I picked up, I don't, it wasn't any sneakers, but it was just clothes. And um, I think like, I, I knew these guys like I was like you must do fucking well like in my head because you even said you're like oh I brought like five pairs here and then I brought my yeah. sister's shoes and then I brought yeah. this and then like I'm thinking I'm like fuck I hate cleaning shoes too <laughs> like so tedious I was actually sad because like that was like, like a business idea I really wanted to do yeah because like it actually blew me away when I first went to Jason Mark in LA for yeah. the first time like their actual standalone store and I saw how cool it was. You just drop off your shoes and how busy it was. Yeah. I was like, man, Edmonton, people are lazy. Like, yeah. this is the oh, yeah. perfect I'm thing to have lazy, here. Bro. Dude, these guys Guilty. are probably making bank. Like, they're probably doing better than any consignment store. Like, they're doing Easy. well. Easily. Easy. So, like, what I want, kind of, like, interesting, because I wanted to kind of tie that into, um, like, are you someone that believes in, I'm not even sure about this, but I'm based on the fact that you clean your shoes so much. Like, you know, people always say, like, wear your fucking shoes and stuff like that. Like, I know you believe in that. Clearly, because you've worn some like heat, but like, do you beat? Are you bad for like beating up shoes? Because I'm so like, I just wanted to ask you because I'm so bad for that. Like, if you look at my shoes now, they're just beat the shit. Like, so like, and I love it. <laughs> don't get me wrong. Like, I definitely trash my shoes. Like, I don't care about creasing them. One thing I do is like, I don't drag my feet. First of all, because a lot oh of people God, do that. I hate when people do that. Like, I like, I grew up not. Like, my parents would kill me when I, like, <laughs> dragged my feet. So I'd never drag my feet. So my soles were always fine. If I see a puddle, I'm obviously avoiding it. Yeah. If I see mud, I'm walking the other way. Other than that, like, I'm pretty bad with shoes. Like, it's pretty cringy. Like, some <laughs> some things I wear and what they've gone through, people wouldn't, like, it's pretty bad. See, <laughs> to be honest, I envisioned you walking around with like a, a roll of toilet paper and putting it under each, each shoe as you walk. Like that's what I envision you like wearing shoes because a lot of your shoes are super clean. You're like other ones are just like I know, like my like, my blanks, like my black pair. I used to wear those for ball outside, like <laughs> like in my like neighborhood. Respect. I used to play around with those. Well, like same thing. Like I was saying, I have like I've had a few pairs of those Easy V twos and like just different versions of the Adidas ones. Yeah, and I've worn them like hiking in Kelowna and like then I just throw them in the washing machine or I wear them like fucking around or I'm all, on the boat. In all no. fairness, they're running shoes. Yeah, you can do whatever you want. You can run them. Thing though, like people are such pussies with that shit. Like you got people that like you have like straight no. like those um those like insole uh, insoles I'll call them to like so you don't crease your shoes and all this shit and people like baby them like but, just fucking like just. Do you know why I'm, though? Why? It's because yeah, it's because these guys, <laughs> they're comes full circle. <laughs> like it's literally ninety percent of these guys, they spent such a huge amount of money for these shoes that they never spent. Yeah. Like this is a huge part of their money. That's what that I mean. They, they spent the resale. Yeah, they yeah. they paid resale to get this shoe, and they want it to flex, yeah. and they want to make it last as long as possible and mean the best possible condition so they can make their money back. But it's more. I like the way Jordans look creased. Exactly, and they look good. That's how I yeah. like. Like whenever I wore these, 
dude. Let's see these because like, I even I like, didn't even care. I'd be like when I wear them, like yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Like I'd, I'd just be crushing it. You just like, made like a lot. You just made a lot of sneaker heads mad right now. Yeah, but, but like people go crazy. Like these are shoes. They look way better worn. Yeah, hundred percent, especially but, ones. But time. at the same time, like I do get it. Like there's some yeah. shoes where. If I, I have, spent if I spent that much money, okay. If I yeah. ever in my life spend a thousand dollars on a pair of Jordan ones, I'm fucking probably gonna keep pretty crisp. <laughs> like, yeah, no, like, <laughs> but I haven't. I've never done that. I've always like I've gotten sh- lucky. There's so. shoes where like I buy them and it's like I love these. It's like I want to keep these forever. But in my brain, I'm like, you should sell these because like you're 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 losing a lot of money. So sometimes Same like dollar sign. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes when I wear them, like I'll wear them like. I'll wear them super light. I'll, I'll feel it out. If I don't like them that much, like if I lose a little bit of like, yeah. then I'll sell them. Have you, here's another question. Have you ever bought a pair of shoes or like got like just for the, the flex or just to, the, for the hype? Have you ever just got a pair of shoes just for that? Or did you like honestly like the shoe? Like every single pair, like I like them personally. I don't care about what nobody says or any of the hate mail. Every shoe I buy, I like. Every shoe I buy, I like. Because the way I see it is, if I like it, I could probably sell it too. Because that means someone else would have to like it. Yeah. Ooh, good and, point. I like that. And if I don't sell it, I'm not mad. Because I, like, I'm happy because I, I get to keep these. Yeah. So I always buy shit I like. For the most part. I, you, like, I, like, I, I really can't think of a shoe I didn't like. Would you, would you say that's like a... A very rare thing to see in, in this whole culture. A lot of people just buy them just for, the, for the hype. Yeah. Everyone, everyone just buys these for the hype. 100%. Nowadays, like, especially Edmonton, which is really bad. Like, the, you have your true heads, like yeah. the true people that's been in the shoes for a long time, or not even in the shoes that people just generally just buy what they like and they yeah. wear it. But then the huge portion of it are the kids trying to flex want to look good you know trying to, trying to get some biddies with these <laughs> six shoes yo but it's like, like it, it ain't it ain't it ain't you like it ain't it that's not it man like it's not though and that, that's a sad part of it but yeah like like sneaker culture itself is is gone like yeah it, i was gonna just say like where do you think it is now Cause like, like in my opinion you have so many so much trash like coming out and I feel like even resale is starting to not die, but it's like way less than it used to be. Cause I rem- like I haven't seen people lining up. I haven't seen raffles. Nothing. I remember I bought the Yeezy. What are those big fucking clunkers? The five hundreds. Oh yeah. I bought those. Love them. That's my controversial opinion. I fucking love those shoes. Yeah, they look great. Yeah. A lot of people don't like them, but I picked them up. I just phone Foosh, and I was like, I just like remembered they came out that day, and I'm like. It's like three in the afternoon. I'm like, do you have these in a twelve? Wait, which color you get? The uh, salt or whatever. Oh, those ones. Yeah. Okay. Just shit like that, or like, or I went to Vancouver and they had some. It was uh, maybe I'm just a lucky fucking guy. Maybe I have a horseshoe in my ass, but I went to Adidas in Vancouver, and they had black and the black pair and the gray pair of the Power Face mm-hmm. that somebody returned in my size before me in line for retail, like ninety bucks. I'm Dude. like, okay. I've worn those for like th- two years. I fucking, I love those shoes. Yeah. And shit like that. And then you have kids who just like, there's like a new color of Yeezys every two minutes. There's a new like trash Jordans coming out. There's like, I don't know, like 2.0 version, 3.0 version. It's like, the fuck? <laughs> yeah. Like, okay. I've, I've had this discussion with a lot of my friends and I get pretty heated because like, li- <laughs> sneaker culture is dead. And when you look at sneakers nowadays, especially today, when you think sneakers, especially new people, all they think about is Off White, yeah. Travis Scott, Dior. Yeah, that like that's, that's fair. literally that's it. Fair. Yeah. That, that's all they think about. And like, especially like, like a big thing about culture is the history behind the shoe. There's no, there's no history behind a fucking Travis Scott one, even though they're dope. But like, <laughs> those, those are cool. Those are the only release I liked. But I was just gonna say, like the like, out of uh, obviously the only like they've released the original ten of the off white ones, and then they release more afterwards. There's honestly like two, three pairs I'd actually want out of like thirteen or more. It, it's funny because like, you know what I mean. And then the Travis ones, I only like the ones. The ones are fucking sick. And then the rest of them, I don't like them like at all. Yeah, it's funny because those off whites, I always. 
I always talk a lot of shit about them. And it's mainly because I'm pissed because I never got a pair. Ooh, it was salty. one of the very yeah. first. Yeah, no, it was one of the very first times where I just took a straight L for like twelve straight pairs. Like I've what? like I didn't like to this day I haven't had a single off white shoe. And it's just like, and there's only one I really like. I only like the Presto, the first color. Okay. Other, no, they're not bad. Like we raffled one I off like the for Chicago's. Good. I don't like the. Yeah, I don't like the UNC. We raffled those off at Soul Good when I picked them up. Like they're pretty nice. Not not like I don't think how nice it is matches its price value 5K right now. US or whatever. Yeah, <laughs> or more. Jeez. But those Travis ones, I picked those up. Like I, I, I middled mad one for my friend. Yeah. I pick, I opened the box. This was the highest quality Jordan I picked up in a while, ever. For ever. me, do you think me. that comes from like Travis himself though? Hell no. He does not <laughs> care. I, I think Jordan was just like, this is a big collab. We flipped it's, a big, this. it's a big deal, so it, it has we, to We hit. flipped the swoosh. That's a yeah. big deal. So we got we to gotta, we gotta <laughs> do, do something. something about it. Yeah, All but right. I was uh, wondering, like, who do you think that came from? Yeah, but I was, I was blown away. Like, I, I picked it up, and I was like. I think Travis is an OG with it, man. He's rocking SBs. That's a, that's a big reason why they're so, they're so big now. True. I mean, he is. But that's the sad part, and what I hate about this stuff, and this is what gets me fired up, is like, these fucking kids and they not even kids sorry I, I i meant these fucking rappers you see the cars they drive and they fucking ruin them and you see like they all get the same thing and then the shoes you see all the same thing what denim are they wearing they're all wearing chrome hearts denim now what shoes are they wearing they're all wearing fucking sbs they're all like it's all the same fucking thing mm-hmm. and that's all you see and that obviously it's why the kids fucking love it but i fucking hate it like have your own like and that's why i do respect like Travis more than a lot of them is because I feel like he has his own style. So yeah. like he has his own kind of influence. Like Kanye has his own influence, but like a lot of in a like to an extent. And again, like a lot of it has to do with history. And there's like where's the history? But yeah, at least he has like a style. No. Yeah, no, I agree. He but has then, a lot of good shit. Yeah, and that's the thing is I love and that. He's been wearing a shit for a very long time. And, but that's the thing is he's been doing that. Yeah, and that's what I respect is you've been he's been doing that when it wasn't a thing. Yeah, and then now it's like all you see you scroll through an Instagram feed. It's like what they're wearing. It's cro- probably wearing Chrome Hearts, Chrome Hearts, Chrome Hearts denim, and then like <laughs> SBs or like I don't know where you could yeah. go with this ones. Ones are like yeah, ones are disgusting right now. Don't ruin ones for me though, because I fucking love. I love it's like my ones favorite too. Pairs, <laughs> and it's it's a sad. Actually, hold on, hold on. I'm gonna I'm gonna re- rewind back. The worst deal I've ever made was selling a pair of Chicago ones for 280. Because I had so many pairs. I had what? so many pairs, and <laughs> yeah. God, that's got a sting. I, I had a, I had a buddy in Calgary, and he was in town, and he really wanted them, and. I, I knew he was gonna wear them at least, so I, I was like, "Yeah, two eighties, two eighties." I. Can you get, can you get me a pair of Chicago ones and a twelve for? <laughs> <laughs> I'm a twelve. I can wear that. You know what's really funny? I also had a twelve too, and I sold that for three eighty. Jeez, I would have bought two pairs. I got, I stocked up on Chicago ones, and I was just too impatient. Oh my god, this is just making. Now I'm just getting depressed over here thinking about Leave. this. Leave. Yeah. <laughs> so and like something else I wanted to bring up. Um, so we were talking before the podcast. So as far as you have a collection of 280, that's wild. In my opinion, it's not, if you really think about the grand scheme of things. Keyword had a collection. Had, of yes. had. Where are you at now? Uh, about like 141. Okay, fair. Yeah. So at that peak, I know you were saying you're going to just, we'll call it like, just take the whole fucking collection. Mm-hmm. So how did that go down? Would yeah. You, and so, I, what I was curious about is, do you consider that a regret? Yeah, so I was approached to sell my whole collection a few years ago. Uh, they offered me an amount. I'm not going to say who it was, but they weren't in our city. Uh, they offered me 65 k for everything. And it wasn't 280 pairs at the time. It was like more over like 190-ish, maybe yeah. 180. And I, I heard that number, and I don't know if it was at the heat of the moment. Like I just didn't want to get rid of everything. The ego. <laughs> and my ego, and I had this crazy idea that everything else would just increase in price, which a lot of them, some did, some didn't. I offered back. I said I'd sell it all for 75 k 
And he said, no, he's like, I can't afford that. And I was like, okay, well, I guess we don't have a deal. But fast forward to Ruthless. today. Yeah, I would have took that shit in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, I, like, I regret it, like, really bad. Like, now, like, I'll be lucky if I get, like, 40-something. So when you heard that number, did it, did it hit home how much that was? Or was it still, like, you're like, this guy's trying to hustle me. Like, he's trying to get it on the low. Like, did it hit? Like, for me, like, hearing that number, I'm like, shit that's a lot of cat yeah take it i'll hope you pack it in the u-haul like just take it so the first thing i thought about when i thought about that money i literally was like okay if i sell it for 65 with 50k what could i buy to make money off of in regards to shoes to live off of like my momentum right now and at the time there wasn't like the value of shoes was like really low at the yeah. time like it was very like it almost looked downward so I was like, man, like, I don't think this is a good time to sell on, just yeah. reinvest. It's either I would take the money, move to a different hobby, which I didn't want to do. Because yeah. I love shoes. I actually really enjoy them. But but here's like, here's what I do. Here's what I would do if I were you. You tell me if I'm, if it's got you fucked up or not, or if you agree with me. I would just fuck them, sell them 65000 take the money. You could spend like... Like you, you literally said yourself, and I've said myself. Like now, we're wearing like, I fuck with Vans. I fuck with these shoes that I could buy. You could, you know, how many pairs of Vans and Air Force Ones and all this shit, and the shoes I bought today, a hundred dollars. You know how many pairs of those you could buy? Like things that you'd actually wear every day. You could still buy some heat that you love. Like if you want, like if you love the Chicago ones, if you love certain like Jordans, you could still have a collection of shoes that still mean something to you and shoes that you're gonna wear every day. And still have like 50 grand. Yeah. That's how I think about it. That's the first yeah. thing I thought about. I was like, bro, I just buy like 50 new pairs of shoes and call it a day. I thought about it. Like at that point, I was, I started to sell my shoes. Like I was selling my shoes slowly and I started following that because I used to be super quantity over quality. Like I always thought. You don't say, Robin. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> I was like, yeah, more shoes, the better. But then like, I mean, I got smarter and I was like, I think quality is better. Yeah, yeah. Like, and I thought about it. I was like, I would go through my shoes and I'd be like, I don't want to wear that one, that one, that one, that one, that one. Maybe I'll wear that one on like a Saturday. Or, and then I'd go through all of them and I'd be like, I, I actually don't like a lot of these shoes anymore. Like it was more of like heat of the moment shoes. It changes though. Like style changes. Yeah. All oh, the time. back then though, I did have a three second rule. So back then, for me to determine whether or not I buy a shoe, I would look at it for three seconds. And if I liked it in that three-second span, yeah. I'd buy it. Yeah, That was my rule, which is probably why I had a lot of pairs. <laughs> but <laughs> this is sick. <laughs> yeah. I was like, dope. I, you haven't even like opened it or nothing. <laughs> you just look at it. It was pretty funny because sometimes I'd open the box and be like, yeah. So funny you bring that up i was curious about that too like saying getting into a different hobby because like now nowadays i've seen like basketball cards and all these like mostly card collecting i've seen is like massive right now what would you get into if it wasn't if it wasn't sneakers now i give you sixty let let's say you take your deal what are you getting into are, are we talking hobbies to make hobbies. money or just hobbies hobbies <laughs> Both. <laughs> well, like if you get into a serious hobby, you can make money at it. <laughs> that's true. Right? Like, because with 65K, you're getting into a pretty, like any hobby, there's different, there's it levels to this shit. Huh? Well, okay. Yeah. Like, I, I collect some die cast cars, right? And I've gotten this, like, a decent amount of value in it. And you can make money on it. I've seen people on eBay and even close friend of ours, Jeff, has been sending me links to stuff on eBay. Some of these cars that I've bought for like $300 are now going for like 800 thousand dollars and i'm like okay like take mine like but at the same time like you i enjoy it i love having it and yes i went into a phase where it was quantity over quality now i've kind of dialed it back more into just like the higher end the more detail the better right and the the nicer stuff but mm -hmm. i don't know i think hobbies i get into would be because i know cards are a big thing huge <laughs> i'll be honest like i tried to get into it I just have no interest. Not for you. Yeah. Like I have to have interest in something to make it my hobby. Yeah. That's yeah. like that's a thing. It's not a hobby. It's a hustle. It's a Ex side hustle. Exactly. If, if you don't, if you're not into it, like you don't give a fuck. Can't wear. You can't wear a pair of cards. Exactly. <laughs> there you go. Robin's like, how do I put these on my feet, bro? <laughs> <laughs> 
I mean, like... All right, sorry for the break there. Camera problems as usual, as if you've been watching the podcast, you know we have a lot of those. Classic. Yeah. <laughs> Classic dog shit podcast. <laughs> uh, but anyways, I think I left off on, we were just talking about how, yeah, it's just coming up now that I've noticed these Twitch streamers doing their packs, like, that's such a hustle. Like, now that I'm really thinking about it, because this is the second time I've talked about it today, <laughs> but it's like, it's funny how, you know, you're selling this pack of cards for $2,500. Some are $5,000 because if it's between a certain production line that you might hit on something, plus uh, plus you ha- plus you you're streaming, they're getting donations, they're getting subs, they're getting all that shit. Like, bro, this shit's like, where's it going to go from here? Like, <laughs> if it's taken off that crazy, like you were even saying yourself, like how it, um, you've never seen something like it like blow up that fast. Yeah, it's limitless. Like I said, like the trend, like I've never seen a trend shoot up like this like it's never i've never seen anything where the money like i didn't even know streaming opening packs was a thing yeah i would Until never today. i would never i've actually watched one okay I, I did watch the pokemon one i watched this one pokemon one where this guy freaked out and i was like yeah wow people are actually there's actually twenty five thousand people watching this guy freak out yeah. about a card but this, this guy's just this guy's just nailed it because uh i wish i knew the name so you, you guys could watch it but um, like he's super knowledgeable. His collections like classic, like over million dollar collection. He knows everything. So it's the right person to do it. Right. And that's why, like, like if I did it, I'm like, is this good? Is this good? <laughs> but yeah, he's I like, would... he knows each and every little thing. So it's, it's interesting. The thing that really kind of annoys me is like, how many times have I been down the toy aisle? Let's say looking for hot wheels or something. And I see these cards. I'm like, Psh, who's looking for cars nowadays? And now these things are going for like stupid amounts of money. You're just like, I was there. <laughs> Literally just packs there. Of cards. I could have grabbed as many as I want. At Walmart. I <laughs> just chilling there. That's crazy. But that's the thing is like, I don't know. I need the plug on that though. I, I need the, the card plug because oh, uh, we, we were talking off camera about how we definitely need to uh, fire up a part two here of us opening some cards if we can ever possibly get our hands on it. One pack. Even one just, pack. Just one pack. Because you were telling me that, like, tell us more about this, like, rotation. Because I didn't even know this was a thing. And, like, how these Walmarts get stocked with it. Oh, yeah. Cause, I didn't uh, even know how, I didn't even know that Walmart was the plug. Yeah. Let alone, <laughs> like. <laughs> so, like, a lot of these cards. It's laughable, man. Dude, Let alone it, Doreen crazy, working man. at Walmart. And <laughs> <laughs> Dude, like, it's crazy because, yeah, like I said, Walmart doesn't even stock these cards. Like, the actual produce, like, like, Panini. They actually have a stock person to go into the Walmart, stock it themselves, and then put it up. And then you can just go buy it. So no one actually knows when they're there. Well, for what we know. It's like a similar model yeah. to uh, like how Costco operates. Like they just sell that space. Yep. So Walmart just sells that space. And they just go this in. This guy pulls up. Drop the product. Why doesn't he buy them? I don't know. He's old as shit too and he doesn't care. Maybe he's just dumb. <laughs> maybe he just doesn't know. Yeah, they like, hustled him. Maybe he just doesn't know. Like it's like, do you grow up buying cards? No. Okay, yeah. Can you do this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, it's like a pre-screening, yeah. or maybe it's like the twenty percent rule. You can well, only buy could so many. Be. Yeah. God, the security on that must be insane. Like comes up in like a Brinks van or like that. <laughs> Pretty much, you never know. Man, I need a job. Maybe I should just go apply for be one of them. <laughs> Wild, but yeah, the cards has been. Getting pretty crazy. I'm not too sure if before the break, um, if I asked you this, but like, fuck it, I'll ask you again. Like, you were like, if you were to get into another hobby, would it be cards or would it be like, do you have anything else in mind or is it just kind of you found what you like and yeah. you rolled with it and now you are where you are? I do love shoes. Like, the future does not seem promising though in yeah. regards to profit, especially if you're doing everything manually. Even, and your, own, even your own feelings on it, bro. Like, yeah, I'm like, in the same boat, I feel you. Like, it's just not there anymore. Like, I enjoy the shoes. It's just, culture is what drove me to like the hobby itself. And considering the growth of shoes and how culture is disappearing, it, it's tough to stay with it. It's just not, it's just not the same. So Fair enough, honestly. Yeah. And like we were saying before, like, if you're not into it, how are you supposed to stay with it, right? Like Exactly. Like, I fell in love with shoes because of the culture and the history behind every pair. So, like, when I look at these shoes, right, they all, like, every single shoe I have 
that I own personally has its own meaning. Like, yeah, give us a little rundown of what you brought today. Yeah, I'll just start from the left. So, these are Black Laser Forest from 2005. Uh, I got those back in 2014 during our first Soul Good event, and I actually got it from a really, really good friend for 200 bucks, which is really, really cheap considering how much they go for now. And so what's the let's just also add in how you like where, uh, sorry, I'm completely drawing a blank, but. Just like the price you paid, if any, versus what they are now. Yeah. I, I'm genuinely curious because I've never even seen these before, the original yeah. ones. Those were the original Black Laser 4. And like, I paid 200 They go for like around 1200 US now. Around there. Not, nothing super crazy. But it, it, it just meant <laughs> a lot for me. <laughs> just a good friend giving me a good shoe. And he doesn't live in Edmonton anymore. So it meant a lot more for me. These easy ones, these tans. Uh, These were my first big purchase. It was actually the first shoe I bought over $300. And that's a big jump. What year did those come out? I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's 2009. Okay. I could be wrong. But yeah, I bought these also in the beginning of 2014. And this was a big thing for me because this is what kind of introduced me to like the higher margin shoes. Like I, I used to only sell shoes for one. Four, I would only buy shoes for one fifty each, literally. So, so these were the the gateway shoe. This was easily the gateway. Like literally, I'll make sure this cut works. <laughs> <laughs> I literally like when I bought it. I bought it for eighteen hundred bucks, and at the time, and they were obviously barely worn at the time. Uh, they were going for like middle around like. 2200 2300 so it was a lot it was a lot cheaper and i remember i had a lot of stock at home yeah i had a bunch of shoes at home that like i, was, I looked at them and i was like i could just sell these right now and buy these sh- buy these shoes because i saw them on instagram and i was like yo fuck it i'll do it so that day i literally sold seven pairs of shoes for 1800 bucks i didn't have a paypal at the time which is really funny or there was an issue with my paypal so i had to get my friend to buy it for me so i just gave him the cash i was like yo just just get it and that was it. That was my first big purchase. And sorry, what what are they at now? Like, if you were to buy a pair of those now, it, I tried it's to pull tough. Up like, <laughs> a used pair is around like <clears throat> like two k, and they're probably all used at this yeah. point. Oh, yeah. Brand new pairs are like pretty expensive, yeah. like upper echelon of three. Fuck. <laughs> yeah. Well, but, but it's, the first of the Nike collabs. Yeah, so. and it's really funny because when I got this pair, like I said, it was the first shoe I bought for over three hundred dollars. Four weeks later, I bought the black and pink one of these <laughs> for really cheap. I actually got hooked up by a really reputable guy, probably one of the kings of the sneaker scene in Vancouver, and yeah, he gave fair. it to me for eight hundred bucks. Fuck, <laughs> steal. And now, like, even how <clears throat> how much how worn they are, I could still probably sell them for like eighteen. Yeah, like, easy. That's a great guy. He was a great guy. <laughs> great yeah. fucking guy. So that's it for the Yeezys. And now. I brought these, my Chicago ones, because this was a big, big story. Yeah. So when these came out... I... And I'll mention one of my favorite, definitely, as far as the mm-hmm. Jordan ones go. So kind of happy you brought that through. I love those. Ignore my ignorance, because I, I think I forgot the year, but I pretty, I'm pretty, i pretty sure it was 2015 when they re-released these. Because yeah, it was 2013, yeah. and then... Because I tried to get those. Yeah, 2013 was the Jumpman, and 2015 was like the OG like Chicago one release. So when we first heard about the release, they were only coming out in Foot Lock, or not even Foot Lock, it was just Foosh on White Ave. Support Foosh, I fuck with Foosh. (laughs) But back then, it was a lineup only. Yeah, I remember that. I remember that because I wanted them, and I refused to do that. For me, (laughs) I I titled myself the king of lineups. Like me and a couple of my friends, we were the king, because we we would line up for how, like when we lined up for the Tiffany Dunks, we lined up. For 32 hours, and it was minus 32 outside. You still have those? No. Those are a good shoot out right yeah. now. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> I, I don't want to bring that up. I know. That's another bad one. But yeah. <laughs> anyway, sorry. Carry on. 32 hours, minus 32. That was fucked up, but I enjoyed it. This was the same thing. I remember I got off work at 3 p.m. at Foot Locker, and they were coming out the day after at 10 o'clock. And I was like, man, I, I was getting so nervous. I started driving around white. To see if anyone would start lining up, right? So I was like, okay. If I see someone line up, I got to line up. And then after half an hour, I was like, man, I've been here for half an hour already. 
I'm just going to sit in front of the line. Like, fuck it. So I started it because I saw other people driving around, like a bunch of sneaker people, and they were doing the same thing as me. So I sat down. I texted my friends, and they're like, yo, you're lining up right now? It's freaking like, I think it was five by now. It was like five o'clock. I'm like, yeah, fuck it. Let's do it. Hey, bro, that's light work. Yeah. Like, for what you've done. <laughs> it was actually summer, so it actually wasn't that bad. Right. Easy, easy. Easy. It wasn't bad. But, like, we got all our friends. We lined up. And they, like, we know the people at Foosh. They're really cool. They they gave us exactly what sizes were there. So we just made our own list, accounted for everything. And then we looked, and we are like, okay, there's, like, a size, I think it was, like, 11, and a size 13 left. So then... One of our friends, he's an, he's an, I'm not going to mention his name, but he's an older guy. They're really big into sneakerheads. One of the biggest OGs. He loves these. These are his favorite pair, and he wanted one so bad. He's a size 13. And he was willing to line up. And I, I was like, yo, I'm not going to say his name. I was like, yo, just come over here. If you're down to line up, we'll save your spot, and then uh, you can get the 13. And we already told like the owners of Foosh, like, yeah, this guy's going to come. Like Right now, he's going to line up for the 13. These two Asian guys come right before our friend comes and we're like, oh, uh, and we're trying to lie. We're like, yeah, there's actually only one size 11 left. Uh, there's a 13, but it's already accounted for. He says he just had to pick something up and he's coming back. And they're like, oh, it's okay. We only want one pair. And I was like, okay. So our older friend came, he lines up, he's at the end of the line. And then we just line up for the whole night. It was crazy because it's on white. Uh, well, I forgot what bar is right beside there again. Uh, uh, it used to be the rack. No, no, no. It's the one Isn't after that. that. At Burns? I don't know. I what, think so, yeah. What was it? By Foosh? Yeah. The one right beside Beercade? Foosh. Yeah. Was was it Beercade then yeah. or was it the well, rack? Maybe not the Beercade then. But before that. Yeah. But <clears throat> that lineup was crazy because I didn't realize how For many the bar. Ca- yeah, oh, and so Fush was right beside it. Yeah. So everyone was like picking on us, like, yo, what are you doing? We're like, oh, we're lining up for shoes. It's like, y'all are fucking crazy. Because they're all, they're all mangled, right? And yeah. we're like, oh, you're, yeah. you're fucking fucked up too. So, <laughs> yeah, but it was cool. Like, I ran into like a lot of sneaker friends. Like, one person was like, I consider him a friend, but he was like a fan of me. And he was like, yo, I got to buy you a Donair. And he took me to get a Donair. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm going off track right now, but yeah, the lineup was sick, crazy, watched a bunch of fights <laughs> all night long, right in front of us. And we're just well, sitting yeah, in our course. chairs, eating Tim's and stuff. Yeah. Like, we're like, what is going on? Are we dead? It's but yeah, you've probably never been down there sober. Yeah. So then you're like, dude, is this I was what like, life this, is like? This is, I was like, white Ave is this, you yeah. know, this is unbelievable. You're this like, was me at 18, smell? man, I'm <laughs> done. <laughs> yeah. Just some dusted kids out. Yeah. So then... Fast forward Holy at nine forty five, right before they open, they started like they were taking it ticketing us. So giving us a ticket for our pairs, right? Holy fuck, I thought you meant like twelve was like no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so they were giving us a ticket for what, what pair we were getting, right? Yeah. So I was in line, I, I was first, I got it, all my friends got it. And then at the very end of the line, the Asian guy that said I wasn't gonna get a pair was like, Oh, I'm here for the thirteen. And like the whole lineup was like fucking pit i i was i freaked out yeah because i let because it got uh, that night it got so cold and like this guy didn't even bring a jacket so i let him like i turned on my car and i let him sleep in the car like i'm like literally doing everything for this kid yeah (coughs) sorry not covid big big rope big rona (laughs) it's all good (laughs) yeah but i let him stay in my car literally did everything bottom tim's this guy's fucking taking the 13 i was like bro we just talked about that i told you he was getting the 13 he's like and he just ignored me just wouldn't do anything. What? He wouldn't. And people were trying to fight. And my one friend Scraps. was like about to square up in the middle of the store because they let us in then. And like. Bro, you'd be so heated after waiting that, that long. Yeah, like, like, fuck that. Yeah. <coughs> Sorry, my mouth's super dry. <laughs> it's okay. But then, Where's our Aquapana sponsorship? Oh, I need it. I need a anyway. Fiji water sponsorship. Yeah. yeah. Wow, we could really use some water. <laughs> oh, yeah. My throat is bad. <laughs> Anyways, go off. But yeah, like there is a fight. Like. About to be like fists were about to be thrown. This little Asian kid's about to get his ass kicked <laughs> by some thir- like thirty eight year old guy, and I was like, I was like, you know what? I can't do this. Like I- I'm yeah, so pissed off. This. So I went up to the kid. I grabbed him. I grabbed his ticket, and then I gave him my ticket. I was like, you buy a size. T-
But I, I, <laughs> I'll cut it out. Yeah. Start now. So I, I basically, I was like, yo, I cursed at him. I said a bunch of shit. Yeah. Yeah. I, thought, I, I went off. I almost fucking punched him in the face, grabbed his ticket, put my ticket in his hand, and I said, enjoy this, you piece of shit, because I'm going to beat the shit out of you next time I see you. Because I was, I was freaking out, and I just wanted to go home. You're sleep deprived. Yeah. You want to go so in your tired. own bed, bro. I watched too many fights. Yeah. I was like, man, like I really just want to go home. You've watched, all the, techni- you've watched so all the people's fighting techniques all night. Yeah. So then, like, I bought the 13. Or I didn't buy the 13. I gave the 13 ticket to my friend. And I just let him go to the front of the line. I was like, just get your pair. Lock it down. Yeah. You want this shit. I still have a 2013 pair at home. I don't like it. But whatever. I, I don't care. At least I got to hang out with the homies. Yeah. Chill. Yeah. That happened. And then... Like, the story kind of went around, which I was pretty surprised about. Yeah. Because people heard about it. Uh, the people at Foosh, like, I know them personally. And well, they, they were there, too. Like, yeah, and they, so. they knew about it. They saw what happened. They couldn't say anything because yeah. it's, it's, what are what they, they going to do? do? Yeah, exactly. Like, and I appreciate Like, they did everything right. And then, um, I think a few days later, uh, one of my good friends, Noble, I'll mention him. He was second yeah. in line. I know him, yeah. Yeah, like, he told the story to his brother. And, like, they were, like, super, like inspired they're like that was so crazy i'm like that's nuts so then what they ended up doing is noble his brother i don't know who else pitched but they ended up meeting up the kid that bought the 10 and bought it for me fuck and then they they brought it to me like uh, a few days later as a gift wild and i was just like i was like wow this is this is sick (laughs) that's different (laughs) i was like i I didn't see this coming at all I, crazy, I never bro. get shoes, but like from people, to be honest, like gifts, never. See, and that's that's part of the thing that probably <laughs> attracts you to like shoes is like the whole community, right? Like that's crazy to even hear that, right? Like, exactly. To see that, to even hear about that. That's why I love. Like that's why I love shoes. Like I love. Like I love the history, the stories behind lineups, everything. The amount of shoes I lined up for is nuts. But I like remembering the times, going through all those, and that's why like. Yeah, I get it. Chicago's yeah. go for a lot of money. Yeah. But like that was such a like a big moment yeah. in my in my <laughs> sneaker crazy. life where I was like Shit. I don't I, I'll never let this pair go specifically. Go, yeah. If I had a second, well I did. I I'll let those go, but not this one. Fuck yeah. That's it, crazy. It bro. doesn't even have the Jordan one box. Yeah. Wow. Because like Jordan uh when Fouche got on, they got like the shitty end of the stick. So they got like regular black Jordan boxes yeah. when they're supposed to come in the black and red ones. Oh fuck, I didn't know that. Yeah, but I don't know. I didn't care. It's cool. Whatever. One those of my are, favorite. Those shoes. are yours for life. So exactly, it's not all you matters. Mm-hmm. But anyways, um, we're definitely kicking up over an hour here, yeah. which is all good. But uh, I guess we'll leave it at that. Sounds like in the future we'll definitely have to uh, try to get some uh, basketball cards. You're gonna hear some different collecting stories. Yeah, we can talk about everything. <laughs> Streetwear. Anything. Streetwear. We can we can go <laughs> off, but. Uh, I guess we'll just have to save that for part part two, part three, whatever. If you definitely want to come back on, I'm sure we're down for that. Absolutely. So definitely down for that. But uh, thank you for coming on, first and foremost. Uh, love the stories. Definitely things that I haven't even heard before, so that was really interesting. Appreciate and, yeah, it. Yeah, if you want to plug, like, what's your Instagram? What's, like, anything you need to shout out? Like, Soul Good? Yeah. Um, personal Instagram is Art and Ad. Uh, Instagram, you get, I mean, sorry, Soul Good. You can follow us either on Instagram, which is just Soul Good, or on Facebook as well. And I am going to plug one more thing in. Uh, like I said, I'm really in for the community. Like, I love local brand stuff. One of my good homies, uh, there's a brand called Reborn Garments. Uh, they're really, yeah. yeah, they're releasing their fall winter, uh, line pretty soon. Crazy. Uh, sometime October, November. Yeah. So definitely check them out. Sick. And for the people that don't know them, they're literally a couple guys, two of my really good friends that came together, made their own streetwear brand, designed their own stuff. Like this, this flannel was on there, um, and it got it did so well that they actually got. I think it was this flannel on GQ magazine. No way. Uh, yeah, which is wow. really nuts. So, I didn't know that. I thought it was very like low key. Oh, it's from what I from what I know. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I don't know much about it, man. Yeah, but. it it popped off well. So I think their Instagram sh- reborn garments or. I'm sure if you, look, if you look up something along the lines, yeah, of like the website is Shop Reborn, it. so definitely check that out. Sick, for sure. crazy man, I didn't know that. That's wild. Yeah, super dope. That's sick though. It's nice to see that kind of stuff come up. Yeah, but, man. Yeah, sick. Well, I guess yes. Uh, keep an eye out for part two, maybe part three. It sounds like we got way too much to talk about, so <laughs> <laughs> we'll be going off. And yeah, 
Uh, check out Reborn Garments for sure. Anything yeah. you gotta say, Daniel? Just wanted to send, say another thank you to Robin for coming out. Appreciate it. Talking about his hobbies. His almost getting into fights. And don't forget to get your pet spayed or neutered. Peace.